Hello again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this, which is the Skywatcher Sim Guider Auto Guiding System. So first of all, what is it? Well, it's a self-contained guiding unit, which means you don't have to use any extra cameras or you don't need a laptop. Or if you've got a laptop that you know is lacking in resources and everything, then you know you're taking some of the strain away from that. It's completely self-contained and connects straight into your EQ mount through the guiding port and actually guides your mount for you. So first of all, let's just take a look at what's inside the box. Right, so first let's have a look at the Singider unit itself. Uh, it actually looks like a compact style digital camera and for all intents and purposes, that's exactly what it is. It's just got some extra electronics in there to allow it to guide your EQ port. So if we take a look at this unit, you can see on the front we've got the CCD sensor and what you may not see is just on the inside of this rim we have an M42 thread. That's one of the ways that you can use to actually fix it to your telescope. Uh, on the bottom we've got various ports there for uh, connecting the power up and connecting to your mount and connecting the handset and also a port there for upgrading the firmware because there are going to be releases for this to upgrade the firmware in it maybe to add features or to just correct any bugs that are in there. Uh, on the back we've got the LCD screen which gives you all your menus and your readouts and basically tells you what the unit's doing when it's in use and it actually feels like a quite solid rugged piece of kit um, onto the power we also get supplied with this which is a power pack case and it takes four D cell type batteries so the power requirements for the SYN guide are 6 volt now it does tell you in the instructions that, that it will take between 6 and 12 volts but they do tell you that it's just sort of air on the, on the lower side there try and keep at 6 volts if you can um, probably due to the power regulators that are in there and it, you know any chances of overheating what I prefer to do is just use a small PSU, a 6 volt PSU to power my SIN guider. Uh, I don't like to really depend on batteries, but it's provided with the system and you know if you if you want to go that way it's there for you. Um, also we have the lead that connects the unit to your actual EQ mount, the guiding lead. Uh, obviously that doesn't need much explanation at all. Uh, next we have the control unit and it's a little bit like a miniature version of a SIN scan unit this um, you know you work through the menus and there's just arrow keys on it and everything just the full control system basically for the mount now also once you're in your guiding situation and the unit's actually guiding your scope you can unplug this controller from the unit it just helps to save on any clutter and everything which is quite a nice touch really uh, also we get these which I'm going to explain in a little bit more depth shortly uh, a parafocalizing ring and an eyepiece extender and as I said we'll go into those uh, a little bit deeper later we also get this which is a serial lead this is basically for flashing the firmware on the unit uh, and it comes along with this that Skywatcher call the shorting adapter now I don't know how the unit's going to be flash upgraded yet because as I said there's been no uh, firmware upgrade release for it but it's basically this system will be used in some way or another um, as I said I just really don't know so what else is there well I've got to give special mention to this which is the instruction book that comes with the SYN guider unit now Skywatcher have got quite a reputation really for bad uh, instruction manuals just you know not very clear um, they've actually upped the game 100% with this and it's actually a 14 page guide this is the full English guide uh, that I have and it's 14 pages it covers everything that you've got in the box and, and quite concisely covers the, the full setup and, and how to do it and what to do so what are the two extra parts for well the system needs to be focused just like anything else does that you connect up to your telescope and it's it's a fairly rigorous um, focusing routine that you have to go through involving zooming the screen in and just getting the stars as small as possible a little bit like focusing an eyepiece really so what you do is you actually get the unit connected to your guide scope focus it up following all the instructions that are in there and you do get walked through that Next what you do is you lock the focuser on your guiding telescope and use an eyepiece. Now I highly recommend for that that you use one of the 10mm eyepieces that actually come with most um, Skywatcher telescopes anyway. 
Now what we do with this is once your focuser on that scope is locked, remove the sin guider and then take this and take the parafocalizing ring that's supplied, thread the eyepiece through the parafocalizing ring like so and then place that into your focuser. Now what you do is you actually focus the star by sliding the eyepiece in and out like so. Once you've hit a point where you're actually focused, you lock the ring onto the eyepiece like so. Now, when you place this eyepiece into your focuser, it should actually be focused up. If it's not, then just do some, a little bit more fine adjustment. Now this part, the other part that we mentioned, the extender, is because you've actually in effect shortened the eyepiece by attaching the parafocalizing ring, you can now screw this into the eyepiece like so and it actually just gives you enough then to fit into your focuser. It's worth taking a little bit of time over this because I found in using the Sing Guider that the focusing is very important to the, the amount of performance that you'll actually get from the unit. Also we have this which is a M42 to 1.25 inch eyepiece extender. Now basically that will screw onto the front of the unit using the threads that I described earlier. And that then allows us to fix the unit to a telescope, basically just like an eyepiece, uh, you know, just slot it in and fasten it up. So next let's move on to the pros and cons of the unit. Right, so pros and cons. Well, onto the unit itself first. As I said previously, it actually feels like a nice, solid, rugged piece of kit. And you know, the build quality just feels nice. Uh, what I would change on this unit are, first of all, the screen. Now I found the screen to be too small. Uh, none of us are getting any younger. And one of the first things that starts to suffer is your eyes. And at times I found that there was just too much information on the screen or it was actually too small. So I would like to see that screen twice the size if possible. Now also with regards to the screen, I'd like to see it on an hinged system, uh, maybe something like a camcorder does where you flip the screen out or just a, a basic hinge like so. The reason being that when this is fitted onto a scope and you're pointing at some of the awkward positions that you are, you're then going to need to set it up or just to, to study what the situation is on the screen and read whatever information and you're going to be sort of bent at some really awkward positions. Now at the moment you can get around that by using a diagonal and just put the system into a diagonal like so. Now this is a 45 degree diagonal, I found a 90 degree is actually better for doing it with. And, and it just puts the, the sin guider into a slightly better position for you when you're using it. I would also like to see an audible alert on it, just a little bleep or a buzzer. Uh, occasionally you will lose your guide star that you're locked onto and it could be just a, a, a patch of cloud, it could be that you, you know, you're fairly new to the system and you haven't got the settings quite right, you're getting used to it. If it loses its guide star at the moment you just get, uh, it comes up on the screen, star lost. Now the thing is, I don't want to be standing there keeping my eye on this screen all night. You know, sometimes I might go in the house and make a cup of coffee. I could be there with a pair of binoculars sort of looking up. And I might not even know that it's lost the guiding star. And, you know, the first thing I know is that my, my image is ruined. I've, I've lost guide and it's, it's gone all over the place. So just a little audible alert, just a little bleep to say the star's lost a bit. A, a fantastic addition to this unit. Now, another thing is... A little pet hate of mine which is the wire and it's the wire that connects the sin guider to your mount itself which is this and it's actually also a similar sort of wire on the on the control pad and it's just stiff and horrible it's almost like like memory wire uh, if I can just illustrate this it, it just bends back into the shape that you know it started off as and it, it, I just find it to be quite awkward really um, in fact, I've actually purchased a third-party ST4 lead for my SIN guider. The next thing is the control pad itself. Now, I, I've noticed a couple of issues with this, and I have verified these issues with other users, and it's not that my unit's faulty. It's, there is definitely a slight issue. 
and what that is is that sometimes the unit doesn't respond to button presses and also it has a habit of flicking out of menus um, for instance if you go from the preview menu to the lock menu you can be just about to press a button but it flicks back to the preview menu completely on its own and I'm sure Skywatcher can fix that with a, a firmware update sometime in the near future um, so how is it in use well it's like anything else um, I found that you need to sort of get used to it and practice a little bit with it it's a bit like saying you know that buy photoshop and straight away you'll be able to use it which obviously you won't um, you know you have to just work through the menus and everything and as I said before pre full marks to Skywatcher for the manual because it is a very good manual and it just does talk you through the, the, the setup routine and it is a routine that you will probably have to practice two or three times to get it just right I found that the focusing is by far the most important aspect of setup once I did get the unit working and, and tracking it, it tracked absolutely beautifully and what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up uh, in a couple of minutes with uh, an image that's taken with a webcam connected to my Skywatcher 200p I have the Sing Guider connected to a small ST80 piggybacked on the 200p and I took a five minute exposure with a webcam Now I'm sure anybody that knows anything about imaging will tell you that a webcam will show up bad tracking more than anything else and you know the image just speaks for itself other than that am I pleased with the unit I have to say yes I am you do have to put a little bit of time into it but it's like anything else you know put a little bit of time in to get the results out and would I buy it again absolutely 100% yes I do like this unit it, it just I don't know it just appeals to me and I, I want it to work for me um, so yeah I would buy it again and but I would like to see the improvements made that I've suggested and I would also like to see uh, you know a firmware upgrade coming you know fairly soon to either add new features or just fix those couple of little bugs that are in there so I'm going to leave you with that image now and once again thanks for watching